I've got to say, right, I want to, we've talked a little bit, about, you know, we talk about politics, we talk about politics, everyone hates politics, everyone's sick of politics, he's sick of politics, I'm sick of politics, but sometimes it does throw up, um, like, some funny shit, man, and uh, almost the funniest shit in a lot of ways, like, okay, it, it, it's funny in the moment, and then you step back and you realize, oh, wait, this is real, and these people are important, and, you know, everything's fucked up, but um i i saw something it, it it just blew me away and yeah it involves um you know aoc the brand right aoc alexandria ocasio cortez um and listen i don't want to be like accused of being like one of those like conservatives who are obsessed with her or whatever or a lib who's obsessed with her but it's like the reason she keeps getting talked about seems to be that she does and says stupid things and then the republicans mock her and the democrats feel like sort of compelled to pretend that they weren't really stupid and it's like you know listen as i've said i think the fact that she used to be a bartender and and, and she won a political campaign um and has enjoyed a lot of prominence i i did think at the start it was all very endearing but what you've started to see is she has slipped into that mode that politicians get to the towering narcissism the way they can never be wrong the way that their parties kind of like just run this like constant offense no matter what they're doing even when what they're proposing is ridiculous, even when what they're saying isn't factual, even when they don't even know the three fucking chambers of politics and all that nonsense, you know, whatever. Um, and it's like, it's just sort of wore me down a bit. But I also acknowledge that the irony of Republicans mocking AOC for saying stupid things and then coming out and supporting Donald Trump isn't lost on me. And it shouldn't be lost on you. If you're a, uh, if you're a fucking Republican who goes, Oh my God, AOC is so dumb. Listen to the shit that comes out her mouth. How could anyone vote for her? And you voted for Donald Trump. Your box is gone. You're mentally ill because that is a level of cognitive dissonance that I cannot grasp. I can't, I can't grasp that. Uh, I don't think she said anything as dumb as some of Donald Trump's choice uh, moments. So, anyway. She did a fucking video uh, in line with The Intercept. And uh, The Intercept is Glenn Greenwald's kind of publication, uh, you know, where they break stories kind of independent to mainstream media. And it is one of the most conceited, arrogant, embarrassing things I think I've ever seen um, any like any politician put their name to. It is really bad. It's, I don't know, man. It's like, it's so, you just have to watch it with me. It's like seven minutes of your time. I'll periodically fucking pause it to just explain that what you already know which is why this is stupefyingly embarrassing oh wait dunyane fifty dollars man thanks a lot buddy you're a beast richard i am reddit is a zeitgeist influencer for investment and the censorship of favorite topics lol slash echo fox serves to remind people that astroturfing slash control is a huge huge public discourse issue aok is hilarious in an ironic way Mm. You're not even a real. Well, thanks a lot for that, man. Fifty dollars. I'll be sure to put that uh, money to good use in some capacity. I uh, really appreciate it. Thanks for supporting the stream. Thanks for supporting the content. Thanks for supporting me and the stories that I break. Um, right. Anyway, let's let's get into this video. So what she did, right, is AOC's been doing doing a lot of uh, talk about this Green New Deal and how we've got to like make some radical changes. We gotta make radical changes uh to to the the climate man or the whole planet's gonna die and she uh took a lot of derision and a lot of mockery for saying we've only got 12 years and um you know listen 
I'm, I'm definitely not party to that. Like, climate change is very real. It's definitely happening. We've got to sort some shit out. We've got to unhook ourselves from the reliance on fossil fuels. The question is, how do we do that? And the reality is, um, we ignore the technology that would let us do that. Um, and indeed, uh, even in the Green New Deal and the Democratic Party, they actually want legislation brought in to prevent us harnessing the one thing that can save us from a reliance on fossil fuels that we have available to us, and that is nuclear power. And I won't get it, I won't go down that route, but I went back when I was a real hardcore lefty. Um, my friend's dad used to work at a nuclear power plant, and uh, me and him, when I used to go over and hang out, we used to fucking say, like, you know, we used to have these arguments, and I'd be like, you're doing good work. Make sure this goes toward Maria. I will do. Thanks a lot, buddy. Appreciate the five dollars, man. Thank you. Um, but, but and I used to go back and forth and say, oh, you know, it's it's pollute, it's polluting, it's dangerous. Um, you know, it's it's uh, it, it it you know, it's it's got all this like stuff wrong with it, and and of course, nuclear is associated with nuclear arms, and we just need to get rid of it. And this guy was like a real, you know, he, he wasn't just like a, a janitor there; he was like a fucking physicist, a nuclear physicist, my mate's dad. And um, you know, he used to tell me, "What you look, you're young. You know, I understand like there's a lot of reactionary politics around the word nuclear, but like." Trust me, if we adopt, you know, fission, or I always get f get mixed up which way it is, fission or fusion. But anyway, if we adopt nuclear fission and we put it in power grid, like we can make, we, we can get rid of all the fossil fuel problems, all the pollution, all the coal, all of this stuff. Super easy, gone, click like that. And we can do it many times over. We've got more than enough, um, you know, to, to, to do it. And I used to go back and forth with it. And, 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 you know, I, I think about a world that we would live in if Chernobyl hadn't happened. Because obviously growing up, the Chernobyl disaster was horrendous, you know, and people are still feeling the effects of that today. If that hadn't happened, uh, who knows? Because, look, obviously if you have nuclear reactors, there is the you know, there's the chance that something will go wrong. There is a chance that a terrorist might try and crash a plane into it or something. There is a, a chance of a core meltdown like we saw at Fukushima after the tsunamis. These are horrendous things. But the reality is that nuclear power definitely is the solution to all of the problems we're talking about right now. And equally as well, just also as an aside, you know, I don't understand why Republicans wouldn't want to get us, uh, like, not unhooked from uh, oil reliance. Because why the fuck do you want to be reliant on countries like Saudi and Qatar and place and and, and, and your place in Iraq and places like that with their extremist Islamic contingents within their countries? Which last time I checked, you Republicans don't like those guys. So why is this? You know why 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 are we not doing more to get on this nuclear tip? And it's ridiculous. Democrats don't want nuclear, and seemingly Republicans don't, and it's a big issue. But when it comes to climate change, anyway, what the climate scientists had said was we've got twelve years before we hit the point of irreversible damage. Now that irreversible damage could be certain countries going to be affected. There might not be enough food to go around. Nobody said it was an apocalypse, so I don't know why that was taken out of context. And AOC was mocked for that. What she should be mocked for is this video. As you're about to see, it is one of the most embarrassingly narcissistic things I've ever, I've ever seen. So let's, and it's narrated by her. So um, she decided not to do her pandering voice that she likes to put on when black people are in the room, which is uh, a blessing, I suppose. Ah, the bullet train from New York to DC. Right. So the concept of this video, by the way, I should prepare you for that. The concept. Of the, of, the, of the video is that it's a message from the future after she, this inspirational political figure, pushed through the New Deal and we all now live in like some sort of green utopia. Uh, and it, it is, it is insane. It is, it is honestly, it is, it is so bad. It is, it is really bad. It always brings me back to when I first started making this commute. In 2019, I was a freshman in the most diverse Congress in history. Up to that point, it was a critical time. I'll never forget the children in our community. They were so inspired to see this new class of politicians who reflected them navigating the halls of power. 
I'm just going to preface, I'm just going to preface this message from back in time just to let you know from the future how inspirational I am to kids. Like, I, I just can't, like, I just have a bit of humility, like, you know, it was, it was okay up until a point, I suppose, to set the scene, but like, all right, cool. It's often said, you can't be what you can't see. And for the first time, they saw themselves. I think there was something similar with the Green New Deal. We knew that we needed to save the planet and that we had all the technology to do it. Now, this again, um, having all the technology uh, to do it. We, we very clearly don't have all the technology to do it. Um, as I said, I think nuclear would be the way to go. Uh, if you really want to achieve this uh, goal, uh, people don't seem to like that idea in, in power, um, you know, with the people in power for whatever reason. Uh, but the idea that renewable energy is going to fix all of our problems is scientifically nonsense. It's been proven to be scientifically nonsense. Obviously, we should have as much renewable energy sources as we can, obviously, but you can't rely on solar and, and wind. Uh, so we don't have all the technology to do it. In fact, if we did have all the technology to do it, we'd probably be doing it uh you know maybe and in, in 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 fact even if we weren't doing it and we were just like yeah fuck it let's just ride or die with this fucking fossil fuel thing so all these old like you know oligarchs keep making money eventually they would just reach a point where that racket would end and the new racket of renewables would kick in and everything would be renewable so it would just it would just take over and that would become a racket and a load of bullshit for rich people to make money um but no we don't have all the technology to do it um sorry to break that uh, that news to everybody but whatever but people were scared they said it was too big too fast not practical i mean just not possible would be would be uh, a much better uh, critique um just it just isn't possible in the sense that yes because it's not possible it's too big too fast and, and not practical practical because of the nature of how solar power works and how uh wind turbines work and how uh, coastal energy works but uh, all right anyway i think that's because they just couldn't picture it yet mm. anyways i'm getting ahead of myself mm. let's start with how we got here Took a visionary 1977 like AOC, you know? new york mm. a senior scientist named james black made a presentation about how burning fossil fuels could eventually lead to global temperatures rising four or five degrees Fahrenheit. Within two years, one of the world's biggest super tankers was outfitted with a state-of-the-art lab to measure CO2 in the ocean, gathering more data about global warming. Guess who was doing all of this research? Exxon Mobil, the oil and gas company. Oh yeah, Exxon knew this whole time. As well, this did our is all true, by the way. Ten years later, James Hansen, NASA's top climate scientist, told Congress he was 99% certain that global warming was happening and caused by humans. That was 1988, the year before I was even born. So did Exxon listen to the science, including their own? Did they change business models, invest in renewables? No, the opposite. They knew and they doubled down. They and others spent millions setting up a network of lobby groups and think tanks to create doubt and denial about climate change. It was an effort designed to attack and dispute the very kind of science they themselves had been doing. And it worked. Politicians went to bat for fossil fuels and these massive corporations kept digging and mining, drilling and fracking like there was no tomorrow. Now, I do want to say as a... Like just as an aside, all of this is absolutely true. All of this is absolutely disgraceful. Uh, this was all actually ramped up to an even greater degree during the Bush Jr. Uh, administration, uh, where they placed multiple uh, people from these like huge uh, oil companies in positions where they had direct influence, like over uh, environmental policy and the EPA and stuff like this. So, if the video had started with this, I think you know instead of the self-aggrandizing nonsense um i think this would have been a much better hook you know because this is definitely true and people definitely need to know this so I i'm just going to put this down to the intercept trying to inject some vague journalism and and, and factual uh, commentary 
into the video. Unfortunately, it's not going to last very long, so enjoy the history lesson. America became the biggest producer and consumer of oil in the world. Fossil fuel companies made hundreds of billions while the public paid the lion's share to clean up their disasters. We lost a generation of time we'll never get back. Entire species will never get back. Natural Sad. wonders gone forever. And in 2017, Hurricane Maria destroyed the place where my family was from, Puerto Rico. It was like a climate bomb. It took as many American lives as 9-11. And in the next year, when I was elected to Congress, the world's leading climate scientists declared another emergency. They told us that we had 12 years left to cut our emissions in half, or hundreds of millions of people would be more likely to face food and water shortages, poverty, and death. 12 years to change everything. How we got around, how we fed ourselves, how we made our stuff, how we lived and worked, everything. The only way to do it was to transform our economy. Wait, what? And this is, this is, this is where it gets a bit weird because remember, right? We have, uh, <laughs> we, we have all the technology. The video has said that this is a climate issue. We have all the technology. Um, and one of the objections that people have had to this, like, New Deal thing is it included a bunch of stuff that seemed to be about um, injecting economic policy where it was, like, completely not needed. Um, and this video even does that because we're now going to talk about wealth inequality for no good reason which we already knew was broken since the vast majority of wealth was going to just a small handful of people. Yes, and most yes, folks we were falling further and further behind. It was a true turning point. Climate, apparently. Lots of people gave up. They said we were doomed. But some of us remembered. Right, and again, it just moves on. It just it, it just glosses past the fact that we're... Oh yeah, did, did we mention, by the way, that uh, there's this group called the 1% and they have 90% of the wealth and ain't that crazy. And that was holding back the climate probably for some reason, probably. And then they just move on. Like, it just, it's like ridiculous. As a nation, we'd been in peril before. The Great Depression, World War II. We knew from our history how to pull together to overcome impossible odds. And at the very least, we owed it to our children to try. The wave began when Democrats took back the House in 2018. Oh, God. Oh, get me out, guys. <laughs> guys, we fixed every problem in human history. And you know when it started? It started when the Democrats got back in power. Because despite these problems having continued... Uh, pretty much unabated for the eight years Obama was in charge. It's only when Democrats are in the White House do we really make any social progress, despite, of course, you know that uh, financial inequality that you brought up? Uh, uh, well, actually, that went up uh, in the eight uh, years uh, that Obama was there. It's fine. You know, it, it's not even relevant to the climate issue we're talking about. But it just seems strange that the message from the future is telling me Democrats fix everything. We had eight years of Democrats and didn't really fix anything, did we? It was just, again, a continuation of, of, of the same. All right, all right, but that's fine. Listen, it's going to be different this time. This time when the Democrats take over, all our problems are over. It's as simple and as And the that. Senate and the White House in 2020 and launched the decade of the Green New Deal, mm. a flurry of legislation that kicked off our social and ecological transformation to save the planet. Right. It was the kind of swing for the fence ambition we needed. Yeah. Finally, Love we were entertaining solutions on the scale of the crises we faced yep. without leaving anyone behind. That included Medicare for all. The most. Wait, what? How does... How does Medicare for All link to this? How does Medicare for All fix climate change? I, I'll Let's wait a moment, chat. Let's pause. 
because maybe maybe you guys know now again i would love it if we if everyone had free health care I, I, i'd love it like i i'm totally behind that i'll vote for anybody who can get us who can fix the broken healthcare system in america which is a, a, a disgrace that a, a country so affluent and prosperous um basically overcharges and enslaves its population based on their medical needs uh well for their medical needs and because of their medical needs um but do we do we do we know what the link is here because i can't see it but okay she'll explain it i'm sure she'll explain it most popular social program in American history. Mm. We also introduced the federal jobs guarantee, a public okay. option, including dignified living wages for work. Okay. Funnily enough, the biggest problem in those early years was a labor shortage. We we're building a national smart grid. Wait, but how did, what, you haven't explained how Medicare makes the, the temperature go down. You haven't explained that. Are you going to explain that? Spoiler, she does not explain that every building in america putting trains like this one all across the country we needed more workers that group of kids from my neighborhood were right in the middle of it all especially this one girl iliana and notice as well that everybody everybody who makes uh a significant contribution to this future is from her neighborhood it's like there was just something in the water like an opposite of what was going on in flint michigan and they they're just all geniuses and super people and uh oh yeah and there was this one girl from my neighborhood check out what the the next aoc in, no doubt inspired by aoc uh does uh it's, it's unreal oh hang on i, I, I fucked that up well, here we go let's get back to yeah, we curse that group of kids from my neighborhood were right in the middle of it all especially this one girl iliana her first yeah. job out of college was with americorps climate restoring mm. wetlands and bayous in coastal louisiana most of her friends were in her union including some oil workers in transition they took apart old pipelines and got to work planting mangroves with the same salary and benefits so I mean this this girl from her old neighborhood is like in charge of all of the old outdated no doubt Trump supporters digging trenches but check this out guys this is probably the most cringeworthy part of the video because um right I always thought no I'm being serious I always thought, like, when you make stereotypes about, like, people and cultures, uh, we didn't do that anymore because it was considered bigoted. This is so ass puckeringly embarrassing. I can't believe anybody signed off on this. I can't believe anybody signed off on this. But anyway, tell us about healing the land. Of course, when it came to healing the land, we had huge gaps in our knowledge. Luckily, indigenous communities offer generational expertise to help guide the way. So, let me just let me just look at the premise we're putting forward in this video that indigenous people for uh, love them for, but you're saying that the indigenous people could do things that the climate change scientists we have now, the experts, couldn't because indigenous people are connected to the land in a way that us foul colonists aren't. Oh, I don't know about this, chief. Oh shit, I can't even say I don't know about this chief. That's insensitive, isn't it? I mean, literally, you may as well have had these people doing a fucking rain dance and smoking a peace pipe. Uh, it is so insulting and demeaning. It's ridiculous. Like, oh yeah, we had gaps in our knowledge. So we just got some indigenous in. <laughs> and they told, like, 
Oh, it's so bad. It is so bad. Like, I... Ay, 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 I can't. I can't. It, it is so fucking mental that this is a real thing. Um... Ileana got restless, tried her hand as a solar plant engineer for a while, but... Oh, and d remember, if you live in AOC's <laughs> neighborhood, you can just do whatever you want, whenever you want. You, you, like, she was just in charge of, like, planting mangroves and, re re like, land renewal, helping the indigenous people out. Like, and now, she just tried engineering. She just, look, look to help guide the she way. She just tried Indiana engineering. Indiana got restless, tried her hand as a solar plant engineer. For Do you know how many years of study go into being a solar plant engineer? To to engineer solar energy. Like, she just tried it. She just fucking tried it because she's from my neighborhood, you know? And I'm pretty special, so everyone from my neighborhood's special. So she just tried it. She just tried it. She's a solar plant engineer now. But then, for a while, but eventually made her career in raising the next generation as part of the Universal Child Care Initiative. As it turns out, caring for others is valuable, low carbon work. And we started paying real money to folks like teachers. I mean, you've slotted in the phrase low carbon there. But I don't know why. And I don't understand what again what this has to do with climate change yeah we started looking after people better more people alive <laughs> creating more carbon footprints i mean I, I don't know like maybe i'm missing maybe i'm missing the connection here but um is uh, like it, it seems almost counterproductive <laughs> um, if you were you know, just measuring amount of people alive compared to uh, carbon emissions and car. Uh, I feel more people, more emissions probably. But you, you've got it all figured out. You've got it figured out. Domestic workers and home health aides. Those were years of massive change, and not all of it was good. When Hurricane Sheldon hit Southern Florida, parts of Miami went underwater for the last time. But as we battled the floods, fires, and droughts, we knew how lucky we were to have started acting when we did. And we didn't just change the infrastructure, we changed how we did things. We became a society that was not only modern and wealthy, but dignified and humane too. By committing to universal rights like healthcare and meaningful work for all, Climate we stop being so scared of the future. Climate change we stop being scared of each other. This is a climate and we change found video. our shared purpose. Ileana heard the call too, and in 2028, she ran for office. Right, so this chick Ileana from AOC's neighborhood, in case you forgot, has been like some sort of proto ditch digger, indigenous tribe translator facilitator uh solar panel engineer teacher and by 2028 has got it all together to run and win in an in, in an election in the first cycle of publicly funded election campaigns and now she occupies the seat that i once held of course the highest accolade for any politician is to basically hold the position I, AOC, hold. She wouldn't have done it without me, as I said at the start of the video. She wouldn't have been inspired without me in the video. Now she's got it. She owes it all to me, AOC. Uh, remember, none of this is real. This is like, it stopped being a fucking, like, co like those two minutes where it was talking about how corporations are evil and fucking up the planet. That was like a pretty good like PSA and the rest of it is like just some demented like AOC wet dream about how important she is and how she has inspired a generation of people that don't exist. I couldn't be more proud of her, a true child of the Green New Deal. When I think back to my first term in Congress, riding that old school Amtrak in 2019, all of this was still ahead of us and the first big step was just closing our eyes and imagining it. We can be whatever we have the courage to see.
It was pretty rough, wasn't it? it like, I, I, I couldn't believe it. I really couldn't. I was like, is this real? And I saw people talking about it at the time and saying how powerful it was and stuff like this. And I was like, you know, maybe, maybe it is. Like, you know, I don't have anything against her. I don't have anything against AOC. It, oh God, it was, it was a travesty. Um, now, there was also something that was triggering me throughout. Because as you saw there in one of her, she is the woman of many voices after all. Uh, she was talking like uh, she was a child for some reason. It was very bizarre. Like she narrated it in the style of uh, a child. Um, and I was trying to think. I want to, hang on, is this it? Let me just check. I was, try, I was trying to think where I'd heard something like that before right i was trying to think like cause it, i was getting a lot of cringe sure but i was also getting like she's it, her voice reminds me of someone you know and uh if you've ever seen um the movie well in in the west obviously it's called shogun assassin and it was uh, like a splice of an edit of multiple movies the intro of shogun assassin which rizza um you know popularized on his album i think it was liquid swords where he did the intro just listen to the voice and compare it to aoc's voice and this is the narration of the child that the titular shogun assassin has and protects sorry jizza not rizza my bad bobby uh, I was thinking of Bobby Digital. Anyway. Let's go tell people they'll only pay for what they need with Liberty Mutual. Not this guy, obviously. Not the app. Fine, I'll drive. When I was little, my father was famous. He was the greatest samurai in the empire. And he was the Shogun's decapitator. He cut off the heads of 131 lords for the Shogun. Tell me more, AOC. It was a bad time for the Empire. <laughs> I can't! It's ridiculous! It was a bad time for the Empire because of Trump and Republicans. The Shogun just stayed inside his castle and he never came out. People said his brain was infected by devils <laughs> and that he was rotting with evil. The Shogun said the people were not loyal. I can't do it anymore. So it immediately, that it was like on my brain as I was listening to it. Like, where have I heard this before? And legitimately... A, like, I honestly think, again, I think she's like a psyop, like a high-level troll that only really intelligent people are supposed to understand is an elaborate troll slash psyop. Because, you know, <laughs> trolling, when it gets to an elite level, it becomes a psyop. That's what it is. It has to be. Because that is ridiculous. That is ridiculous. That she has done a climate change video in the style of Shogun Assassin. There's just no way, like, there's no way that's an accident, guys. I was, like, you're supposed to recognize that too. You know? So, uh, anyway. Oh! Ridiculous times. Ridiculous times.